the number of earmarks significantly. One of the last acts of the Republican majority was to stop the big omnibus last year and to force a continuing resolution where the result was only 2,600 earmarks. Those who say this large number of earmarks has always been a part of the Senate don't know our history. All you have to do is go back to 1995. 1,400 earmarks. If you go back past there, there were, it were less than that. This is not a constitutional function. It has not been part of the history of the Senate. This growth in earmarks is a perversion of the purpose of this Congress, where we've changed our focus from national interests, the future of this country, to parochial special interests that we work on every year and hardly even talk about those issues that challenge our nation, such as a tax code that is sending jobs overseas, entitlement programs where we don't have a clue how we're going to pay for them, health care when people can't receive it in our country. We're fighting over bike paths and museums and little special projects all year long. This year, with the new majority, we're back up to the second highest level in history of the number of earmarks, special project earmarks that we're supporting. And this bill right here, and we don't even know everything that is in it is yet. It contains at least $20 billion in budget gimmicks and so-called emergency spending. I could go down the list. It would put a lot of people to sleep. A number of ridiculous provisions that we're just finding. The debate, the serious debate over immigration came down to at least one starting solution that we're going to secure our borders. We voted the money to build fence and barriers on our borders. But this bill changes what we've already passed. It allows for only a single layer of fence and takes out the requirement for the location of the fence and states that the money cannot be released until 15 new requirements authored by the Appropriation Committee are satisfied. It's just designed to delay what the American people made clear to us earlier in the year. They want us to have a country with secure borders. This bill changes that. It also provides $10 million to pay for lawyers for illegal aliens. The English requirement that the Senate pass language earlier in the year to ensure that employers are not subjected to government-funded lawsuits if they require English in the workplace, this bill takes that protection away from, from employers and exposes them to lawsuits because they need English spoken in the workplace. Sanctuary cities, the prohibition against sanctuary cities was taken out. The special earmarks for the AFL-CIO, a number of other, I mean, we could go down a list. Again, we're just starting to find out what's in this bill. And I know that very few senators here tonight know what's really in it. The organizations that are watching this Congress to try to identify waste uh, are going to be key voting this tonight, and I think my colleagues know that they consider that a very serious issue. The Citizens Against Government Waste are saying vote no. The Club for Growth says vote no. The American Conservative Union says vote no. The Americans for Prosperity, no. Americans for Tax Reform, no. National Taxpayer Union. We can continue to go down the list all the organizations that downloaded this off, off the web last night and began looking through it within an hour or two found things that made it unacceptable. It's an unacceptable bill, and it should not be part of the world's greatest deliberate body, deliberate, deliberative body tonight. But I think we agreed. I think the American people asked the new majority to end business as usual. And I hope we can do that tonight. I hope we can give the American taxpayers a real Christmas present and stop wasting their money. Stop breaking the promises while we're making all the new promises in here. We're not making provisions to keep the promises that we make. I know most of my colleagues believe that this is not the way we should be running the Senate and that they're like for there to be a better way. 
We don't have to vote against the troops to vote against this bill. I would encourage my Democrat colleagues, many of them who stood with us this year on earmark reform, that's one reason alone to vote against this bill. The policy changes, the moving more money to Planned Parenthood, the compromising our border security. The list is getting longer and longer, and we're not even a quarter way down of the bill yet. I would encourage my colleagues to join the American people and help us stop wasteful spending. It's the last bill of the year. It's the last vote. It's going to say a lot about this Congress and what we've accomplished. This is our chance to at least say no more business as usual. We're not going to do business this way where we pile 3,400 plus pages on a desk in 24 hours, ask the senators of this country to vote for it without even knowing what's in it. It's not the way to run a Senate. It's not the way to run a country. I plead with my colleagues, let's leave this year on a positive note. Vote against this omnibus and give Americans a real Christmas present. Thank you, Mr. President.